Hi everyone, welcome back to the Li Ji podcast. Today, I would say this is a very um, epic episode because this is the the very first episode I have with my friends uh, in the English conversation, uh, and then I'm very. Uh, this is my pleasure to have David here. Uh, I, I want to let him has the introdu- brief introduction uh, of himself. Okay, my name is David. <laughs> um, I recently graduated from Keele University in the, in the United Kingdom, and um, my master's of science in applied social and political psychology. And um, currently, in between, I was a teacher in Taiwan for one year. I'm currently, a teacher in Milwaukee, and looking to go back to Taiwan to teach again at the Cram School, and eventually apply for NTU for a PhD in psychology. Yeah. So. Um Please listen to our podcast, and if you are uh, an audience from Taiwan, David is coming. <laughs> yeah, so you could look forward to meeting David somewhere in Taiwan. Uh, oh, I say, okay, I want like after, I say like just like middle sugar, and they still don't know. I have to say exactly the word that they have to right. memorize. So today we have the uh, David uh, as our podcast guest, and then we wanna talk about the his master um, journey in UK, which is very good. I know a lot of local students um, here in the US. They're really interested in starting a degree in in uh, I mean Europe or like at, at least outside of the United States. So uh, I, I think Dave, David's. Um, Experience could be a very good, um, it was an example for for you guys. Uh, so, so David, uh, I wonder, do you like your undergrad major like somehow like did you to your master degree? Uh, yeah. So I study psychology and political science. So I have dual major for my undergraduate. Mm-hmm. And so um, when I did my master's degree, it's I'm leading up to eventually a PhD, so that was the reason why. Mm-hmm. So, so it leads right into psychology, because I'm focused in research. So when I did my undergraduate, it got me really excited and really interested in psychology. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I started political science first, and so I, this master's degree program merged the two fields together. So that's, it really, it definitely led me into my So program. where did you finish your undergrad? I did my undergraduate in Arizona, so it's the Arizona. University of Arizona. Okay. Are you originally from there? No, no. So I was in the military, and I I got stationed in Arizona. That's kind of what brought me back in there. Oh, okay. So, so you actually like, um, I mean, you served your military before your college. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it like the the normal case, like in the state, like people usually serve their military before college? Um. Yes. Uh, definitely. It depends. There's two ways you could go in the military. Mm-hmm. So one way is enlisted. Mm-hmm. So that's like, uh, like kind of like grunt work. I mm-hmm. guess you could say like the lower levels. Mm-hmm. Everyone who does enlisted, well not everyone, but most people, they go into it, they enlist first and then later they get out. Um, and part of like the agreement of st- joining and doing this mm-hmm. work is that you get free college mm-hmm. in the United States. So you, a lot of people, they will enlist first and then use the benefit to go to college later. But there's another track called officer. Mm-hmm. And in order to be an officer, which is like the leader of the military, you, are, you have to have a degree already. Okay. So like some people when they if they finish you, the degree you mentioned is actually undergrad right B, yeah like undergrad. bachelor degree yeah so if they f- finish their bachelor they can choose another option yeah then if you do your bachelor's then you can become an officer which is like the leader mm-hmm. and then you get paid a lot more money so does it mean like you are the you will be a like higher position in yeah the metric? yeah it's okay. officer ranks it's kind of like similar in Taiwan like yeah, if you I have mean, the like a maybe like advanced degree and then, yeah. and then you can. Um, I think you have, you still have to pass some some kind of exam, mm. and then, and then it's not like when you join the military, you just automatically become the full face of it. Um, but I mean, for sure, you will have a higher salary yeah. in the military. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, tell me about like tell the audience about your master degree. Yeah. So I did uh, my master's at Keele University, and it's a Stoke on Trent in the UK. Uh, the region is called Staffordshire. Uh, and I studied applied social and political psychology. Mm-hmm. So it's um, sort of like the um, psychological dimension of uh, political, uh, like political forces. Okay. So it's like how do individuals react within like the the surrounding political atmosphere? 
So it's the it's like voting behavior and stuff like that. I see. So is the, the the degrees more like the the interaction between country and country or, or more like a people like people, people within the system. Okay. So so in political science they look at how do countries react to other countries? How do countries act? Does that make sense? Or like or you like groups within the country. Okay. But since I'm a psychologist I study how do people how do people react within that um What's the word I'm looking for? Within that environment. So, so like, the political okay. forces are more like um, the environment, mm -hmm. and that changes how uh, human behavior. Right. Okay, so 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 actually the target is the same, con like, the people from the same country. Yeah. Okay. So instead of looking at groups, I look at people within groups. Okay. And how being in that group changes their behavior. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So do you, like, target uh, the people in UK or...? Um, well, actually, I did my research in on Indian and Pakistan. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, so my my degree it, it encompassed a lot of different elements of social psychology. Mm -hmm. So it's like a branch of psychology called social psychology, mm -hmm. which, like I said, it's examining how people re, uh, behave within groups. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I had other parts that aren't just political science. Political mm -hmm. science. So like I saw, I, I did a uh, research on um, like how video games can affect um, pro, like pro-social behavior. Mm -hmm. Allow, um, like online games can make people actually become more social mm -hmm. in like outside the game, this kind of thing. And then also like social media, I did some research on social media mm -hmm. to see how like Instagram affects like social behavior. Yeah, I think it's very likely. Yeah. Um, like <laughs> everyone use Facebook or yeah. at least like any social media platform like maybe most of the people at least have one yeah. and then when they use it it's gonna be uh the situation like when celebrity or like some like so, someone has a like big reputation yeah. uh, in, in the world like, and when they say something like they follow is just follow yeah <laughs> some, some, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot more complicated than just one thing happened right like one thing and then everybody does the same thing because okay. people are very complicated Okay. So what we find is like average. Mm -hmm. That makes any sense. There's a lot of deviation in psychology, so we're looking at like average change. Okay. Like so, like you have big sample sizes, and we see like statistical averages. Oh, most people will do this, but there always will be deviation. So, so when you do the research, how how did you usually like collect the data? Uh, did so you there's like send out a survey or yeah. So there's different ways to do this. Um, depending on what you want to experiment. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing like a like experimentation model, then you have to recruit physical participants and you have to send out like flyers or like post online mm -hmm. or even just like ask departments for participants. It's actually a big problem mm -hmm. because a lot of psychological research ends up having too many participants that are just undergraduates because mm -hmm. they just offer them credit. So it, that's actually kind of a difficult thing in psychology is recruiting enough participants from different areas instead of just getting only from one place because then all your research tells you is how do undergraduates behave in that. <laughs> Does okay. that make sense? So I know like many countries have the, the uh, I would say like uh, requirements for, for people to vote, meaning that they can like kind of officially to um, I mean, stay there, there what they what they stand for, their, their like position of the the polit political, uh, yeah. I mean, fr front, Senate. Um, so, will you like when you collect the data, when you stand out like those kind of survey or like any any yeah. way to collect the data? Would you limit the, the, the like a uh, like a age range of the the survey? Well, it depends on what you're what you're studying. Okay. So if you're studying voting behavior, then yeah, you would want to. So it's limit. not like mandatory. It just depends on the case. Yeah, it depends on what you're studying. Okay. So if you're studying voting behavior, then yes, you would only want to you would only want to capture a demographic that can vote legally. Okay. Because otherwise, the data is like. So it doesn't matter if if people could vote or not. It they still could collect the data. Yeah. Yes. But uh, if they're under eighteen, then you sometimes you'll have to get parental co mm -hmm. consent. Or the guardian could say there's a lot of like very strict rules mm -hmm. on how to collect um, data on human participants. Mm -hmm. So they have to they have to follow very strict ethical guidelines, and they're actually um, the precedence for that is set by the medical community. So mm -hmm. they have to follow medical guidelines on human behavioral data. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you like 
didn't set the the age range of yeah. that. I think it was probably better because sometimes uh, when some student they like, couldn't vote, but they like, really have the idea yeah. of the political like um, positions they, right. they have, like ideas they have. So if you're getting, if you're trying to collect data on attitudes, okay. then yeah, it, it would make sense to get even people who cannot vote because the, you're not looking about what who they're going to vote for, who they're not going to vote for. It's more like capturing like. Uh, ideas or like mm -hmm. why people believe certain things mm -hmm. so that's what i really study so mm -hmm. you would want to see how do people identify within this group parameter like how, how does like their beliefs and this identity and what it means to be that part of identity how does that change what they believe mm -hmm. so we have this thing called priming mm -hmm. where you can where you can kind of remind people of their of their different like ideals and then you can see okay does reminding them of this thing making it more salient, which means you think about it more often, mm -hmm. what well, does that change how they'll behave and how they believe, what they believe? Mm -hmm. So do you need to like collect the data from the same person again? Like, uh, it depends on the, like, it depends on the model. So okay. there's survey data, which mm -hmm. is different. You can do survey data, but that just tells you like what they believe right now. Yes. Um, but there's also experimental model, mm -hmm. which means that you manipulate something in the, in the environment to see if that will change their behavior. Yeah, that's it's interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah, because it's kind of do a follow up re research on that. So um, I wonder, like, among a lot of countries in the Europe, yeah. well, why did you choose UK for your study? Well, part of it's because um, the master's program is only one year. Okay. So, so you want to finish it sooner? Yeah, I wanted to finish it sooner, and also I was originally I was planning on doing my PhD in Europe mm -hmm. because PhDs in Europe are funded entirely funded. You don't have to do any coursework outside of like um, you know like seminar or like people present present their research, mm -hmm. uh, and you get paid like a real salary. Is it fully covering UK? Uh, I'm not sure about UK. Okay. But so, I was planning on doing my my master's in UK because it's only one year. Okay. Which I had to pay for. Yeah. And then do my PhD in Europe. That was my original plan, but like like changed. somewhere, but not probably not UK. Yeah, I like Netherlands or Germany. Yeah, I think Germany usually cover uh, the yeah. PhD story. Yeah. Uh, ne yeah, Netherlands, I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, Netherlands is another one. And so I really, what really attracted me was that I wanted to do my research and not be distracted by other like coursework and stuff. I yeah. To just focus. I think France is the same as well. Yeah, probably. Like they, they support research and, yeah. and P I mean, for sure, PhD. Uh, so, so, so you you say like you mentioned like your original goal is to pursue the, the PhD. Do yeah. you think the COVID somehow like affect your original plan? Uh, yeah, definitely a little bit. <laughs> so like, have you experienced the COVID during study? Uh, it still happened at the end of my studies. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so actually, I had to leave UK a little early mm -hmm. because everything shifted online at the very end. But mm -hmm. that was already my last semester, so I had finished my coursework already. Mm -hmm. I was just working on my dissertation at that point. Mm -hmm. So I got a little lucky with that. Right. So I ended up finishing it up. But it actually it affected my dissertation definitely. Because originally I was planning on collecting data from survey using like um like physical surveys mm -hmm. and then having a uh, collaboration with university in Pakistan in Pakistan and in India mm -hmm. and try to pr uh, collect uh, participant data that way. Mm -hmm. But because of coronavirus like or uh, COVID or whatever you call it, <laughs> the virus. <laughs> now now I had to click uh, all using online samples, and there's a whole other issue with online sampling, so. Right, that's definitely challenging. Yeah. Let me check very quick if, okay. if it's still recording. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I heard like weird sounds. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so kind, kind of like the, um, I mean, the pandemic somehow affect the, the way you, you started your degree, but yeah. uh, it didn't affect the, the resource or like the, the resource you expect in the beginning, right? Not the beginning, but mm -hmm. only only for the dissertation, I mm -hmm. had to adjust to that. Yeah, because you have to like shape everything online, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, and also my, I, I had to do an apprenticeship model where I study under another professor to learn like mm -hmm. the trade of psychology. That one also got affected, so we weren't able to collect the the data for we're doing like a social media study but we weren't able to follow up uh, on because it was an experimental model oh, so I instead see. of just doing survey data we wanted to have people do implicit bias test so, so are you supposed to do that in person right you have to do it in person because <laughs> you have to control the environment yes so if you do it online you can have all these kind of distractions around you because uh -huh. they're, they're just be doing it at home so maybe they have the tv on or they have like radio play or just yeah. other kids or just anything could happen it's too chaotic so it would it would affect the implicit bias effect. 
how does it like affect uh, the resource? Um, so the, since this is an experimental model, we're, it's something called uh, implicit bias, which is we're trying to capture like what people people have biases towards different things. Like like say if you're Taiwanese, mm -hmm. you will have a preference for other Taiwanese people okay. over like foreigner, mm -hmm. even if you don't think about it. Mm -hmm. And so we wouldn't be able to capture this effect if you have distractions, things that are reminding you of like not be, like imagine if you're Taiwanese but you're in America, you probably have like reminders of being in America that might mitigate the effect or something mm -hmm. like this. Okay. This is exactly so. Just to try to like, uh, I would say reduce the variation. Yeah. So we're we're trying to control. Like imagine like you're doing something another scientific experiment with some like hard science like physics. Mm -hmm. um, you would want to control all of the environmental variables so you know. Okay, if I drop this, is it going to fall at the same rate every time? Mm -hmm. But if you go outside and there's a wind, for example. Now you don't know if it's gonna fall all the time because the wind is another force that can affect the ball falling. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? This is the same idea, but in psychology. Or somehow, when when there's attraction, they could affect you. What what do you want want to say yeah. in the beginning? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I think that's and the just next like answer. other distractions can make you remind you of other things. And right. You change your answer. Exactly. Yeah, that's really interesting. Like, um, yeah, I think, that, I mean, it's a definitely a good idea to, like, reduce. Uh, the variation from yeah. the re resource. So, uh, I want to, I want to know because I have never been to Europe and um, never studied uh, in Europe, uh, or I, I should say I only start starting my I mean, overseas in yeah. the U.S. So I believe a lot of um, people really want to uh, know that what is it like uh, when you started a degree in UK. Uh, things are a little different, so because I I believe you can you can compare like the the situation uh, between the UK and the US. Right? Yeah, yeah, I definitely can. Um, I think there's a lot more of like a community focus, mm -hmm. and part of that might have been living on campus, and also I I went to school in a rural area in the UK, mm -hmm. so there wasn't like a big city, mm -hmm. so the people that are there like are all concentrated together, so it really had more of like a family feel. Okay. So like you can meet so many other students all the time and it feels like you know all the other students. Do you, do you mean like it's more like a college town? Yeah, so it's in the middle of farmland, so most people either live there or they commute from like the small towns that are near the farmland. Mm -hmm. So it's just easy to like know people. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that um, all the buildings are very old, so it has a very like weird so in America, a lot of our things we grow up with have reference to mm -hmm. to England. So we learn to like we read fantasy stories and we we see movies and TV show uh, from the past. All, almost all of that has to do with like English. Okay. So going to England as an American, especially the rural town, it feels like you're getting transported into like Robin Hood story or or something like so that. So you kind of like see load things in real. Yeah, and. and when you grow up with them as stories, they feel like they're not real. Okay. Like they're like it, you hear about like those Sherwood Forest, and you hear about like mm -hmm. like knights and the old castles, and then you see them for real. It's like it's kind of a shock. Like okay. you know that they're real, but like part of your brain as a kid thinks of them as being like fake. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, like you fantasy. you already have the stereotype of yeah. the, the UK, and then and when you see it in real, you found that oh, it's actually not a hundred percent like sick. Yeah, same as the, the what I yeah. can imagine. But also that it, it even exists. Okay. Because in your brain, as a kid in America, you think, oh, that's just not real. It's Maybe like just a dream. World. Yeah, like a okay. dream. Mm -hmm. So at first, like when I first got there, it felt like uh, it's sort of like I'm living in a dream. <laughs> okay. A little bit. Uh. What's your like shock, like when you find out something like it really is this? Uh, uh, just like castles. Yeah. Castles. Seeing okay. those castles. Like real huge life. castles. Yeah. And like everything is made from brick, and just okay. The architecture and stuff, I guess. No, uh, I mean, from my imagination, it's very beautiful. Yeah, it's very beautiful and very green. Mm -hmm. What What is the city like? Like the, I mean, the, the um, city you you live in UK compared with um maybe you can just name one of the the city you 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 live you grow yeah. up in the US and like compare it with it. Well, so I lived in big cities most of my life. Okay, so so it's a quite different. Um, because it's like a small town? It's a small town, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's be like a city center mm -hmm. and then everything else is just farmland, green farmland forever. So I, I used to bike to the the town and you just pass cows and oh, farmland okay. and stuff. So wow. It's, 
It is quite different than what I'm used to. Hmm. Um, I did live in Yuma, so that's a little bit closer, but I mean, like this desert environment, so it's not so green, mm. you know what I mean? So it's just different than what I'm used to. Do you think that uh, you kind of like live in a farm? Farm? <laughs> a bit, yeah, I feel a bit, like, a bit like living on a farm. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. So, uh, I wonder when you take the class, like the format of class, is it the same similar? I uh, in like compared with the uh, the U United States. Well, I'm not sure because I didn't do my master's in the U.S. I mean, compared with maybe B.S. Yeah. So, um, when when I did my bachelor's in America, you can choose your classes, and then you can al you also are encouraged to take a lot of like um, coursework that's not related to your major. Okay. In UK, that's not the case. Okay. You take only whatever you choose. You choose your major, and you only take classes for that. So, so that's quite different. So you couldn't choose like a class from another department. No, no. And you, I, in my master's program, I didn't choose any classes. I wasn't allowed to take it. Oh, we just all take exactly the same classes. So literally, like they kind of like arrange the course, yeah. the whole list of that, and yeah. you just like follow the statement and yeah. finish them all. There was one class I could choose, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, and that was um, either I could take. Was it neuro? Oh, it was. Um, I could take either qu qualitative or quantitative analysis class. Mm -hmm. That was the only choice I had. Uh, is it because uh, it's similar to to your research or to your yeah, so degree? Yeah. So you're allowed to choose either one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my so like there's different degrees within psychology, mm -hmm. and that we all in the master program you could choose either like child development, mm -hmm. you could choose social psychology, or you could choose. Um, cognitive sciences mm. and so most most of people's degrees the only difference was the the main class being like either social or or co uh, cognitive or developmental so most of the people in my class chose qualitative analysis which is like um taking down what people say and then analyzing the words and more the like more words like it numbers it's, qualitative is more like word oh words like okay. like um or like be like analyzing behavior. Oh, I I thought it was yeah. quantitative. Yeah, I chose quantitative oh, you because chose I already have enough. I thought I already have enough um, background, and I don't have that much in quantitative at mm -hmm. the time. So I wanted to know more about the numbers. Yeah, that's a good. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. How about classmate? Are are your like most of your classmates from from like local? Um, I'd say it's, there's a actually a good mix. Okay. Yeah. So there was a lot of locals, obviously, but mm -hmm. then we also had people from all around UK mm -hmm. so like even some some from Ireland Ireland yeah okay. and then we also had some people from Germany and one person from Spain okay but I was still only American is there any like Asian students um not in my department <laughs> okay there were some but but uh, most of them were in like hard, harder sciences so like medical field or mm -hmm. so uh, Kiel is really my university Kiel University is one of the biggest for in UK for medical sciences mm -hmm. so there were de there were some Asian uh, mostly from China in the medical mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense I mean inter it's interesting that uh, like your program only have have you as American uh, yeah. students yeah so yeah because I, I think it's probably very from program to program. So when you, uh, I wonder, do you have any culture shock when you first, like, got to UK, or maybe what you can talk about, like, when you start starting your degree there? Uh, yeah. So I had a little bit of a culture shock just in, um, like, when when you grow up in America, you get a lot of stories mm -hmm. about, um, like, fantasy stories all based in the UK. Mm -hmm. So when you go there, it's a kind of weird to see that it's real right yeah so like uh like you get like robin hood stories mm -hmm. or like king arthur and then you go there and like there's really castles and it really looks like the way it's described in the books yeah like, kind of like it's weird as it's real yeah, yeah this is very interesting so do you have like like culture shot regarding maybe language for the weather um so there's a different language like different accents but also different slang in different regions of uk so it was hard to kind of get used to the different language that they use. Even though it's English, it's there's a lot so, of so so they so they kind of use that slang everywhere. Yeah, but there's also like there's there's the universal slang for UK where every region has the same kind of like slang. Mm -hmm. But then there's additional slang for each region that's different. Oh, okay, yeah. so you mean like maybe the city you stay is yeah. they have their like own slang. Even within London itself, there's like mm -hmm. six different regions. Oh that wow. Have different. So even in yeah. London, they have six kind of. Oh, I don't know if it's six. <laughs> I can't remember exact the exact number. At least more than one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
That's interesting. Could you like give give us an example about like the stand lately usually used in daily life? The what? L l like a slang they use in da oh, daily um, life? Yeah. So like in where I lived in Stoke on Trent, that area called Stoke, um, they the old ladies would call you like duck. Duck. If you're a boy, they call the you like, duck. Like 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 a duck. Yeah, like quack quack. <laughs> and then um, also they call you love. Love. There's other stuff too. It's just what I can remember. Which one is more similar? What? Like which one is more like you? you like for, US? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no. I mean, I mean UK. Like which one you did you hear more often? Uh, probably love. Love. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Duck I hear sometimes, but love definitely more often. Okay. Gotcha. It's always the older ladies that do it too. Older ladies. Yeah, it's not really like young. Like like very very old. Yeah. <laughs> or like middle aged. Middle like, age. Yeah. yeah, I think I I heard that sometime when. Like when I was talking to some of my maybe friends, uh, parents, yeah. uh, especially like like late late mothers, mm -hmm. and I, I I think I I was called like maybe darling or, or like like sweetie yeah. sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of similar to US. I think. And yeah. yeah, and it's interesting that when you heard like you you were called by like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, how about like uh, I mean languages? Uh, it definitely uh, there's a difference in in between. Uh, UK and, and, and the US, yeah. how about the food? Yeah, there's also a difference with the language for food. Oh, okay. So like um, chips in U in America are like potato chips, potato chips. but mm -hmm. in UK it's um, french fries. Okay, so when you order something, you gotta be careful. Yeah, you gotta be careful. <laughs> if, you're gonna, if you're gonna get chips, you're gonna get like um, french fries. And they're thick f fries, they're not like the McDonald's fries. Like. Have you ever run into that situation, like when you order something? No, and, oh, I, I've got to do it already a little. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it still gets some getting used to that's really true. Like people tell you that when you're in the US, but you don't really... Yeah, I can imagine like when you order something, when you say chips in it and you got fries in it. Yeah. And then I might, I, I might like get in the fight with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the so restaurant. It's, so it's like chips, or like biscuits is a cookie in UK. Mm. But in, in America, a biscuit is like a bread type of thing. Yes, they don't have to call them rolls. They call them biscuit. At, biscuit, like, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, or scones. Like uh, those biscuits in America are called scones. Scone, okay. mm -hmm. more like more like bread in the U.S. Yeah, though, but it's cooking in, in UK. It's always or like they have things called digestives, mm -hmm. like a weird cookie. Mm -hmm. They're actually pretty good, but like when I heard the name digestive cookie, it sounds like something you eat when you're sick. Mm -hmm. So I would never want to buy that, but then I remember the first time they said, "Hey, you want to digest it?" I was like, um, "I feel okay. okay." I thought it was like offering me medicine, but it's just a type of cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So, um, yeah, I, I know like weather could be could be very different uh, in UK and and I mean from. Oh, it just rains all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I heard, uh, yeah. or what I saw on TV, or yeah. like some some kind of shows that is. Like they always say, like UK is uh, like in the fog and, and yeah. it's raining all the time. And is it? Is it? It's true? not so foggy. It's it's sometimes foggy. it's foggy. Okay. But um, the rain is different too. It's like a light rain all the time. It's okay, rarely so like like in Taiwan you'll have the plum rain mm -hmm. where it's like crazy downpour. Yes. In UK it's like it's like sprinkle, but like constant sprinkle for a really long time. So like do uh, like people live there? Like usually wear like a rain jacket. Yeah, uh, you rain jacket, and they wear they use umbrellas in UK. Okay. A lot more like like Taiwan. Okay. In America, we don't use umbrella that often. Sometimes, but yeah, I feel like I, I kind of feel I I wasn't. I, I mean, <laughs> when I whenever I use umbrella, yeah, umbrella, I, I feel like oh. I'm actually not a like local yeah. <laughs> local people. <laughs> I'm still like a Taiwanese. Yeah. yeah. And that's I mean I if it's a like lighter rain I'm okay with it, yeah. but but when it's like heavy. very heavy rain, yeah. I still so some people like yeah. like they like, don't use any yeah. umbrella, they just let the rain hit them. Part of it's because um in America the rainstorms are usually thunderstorms. Okay. So like it can actually be kind of dangerous to have an umbrella sometimes here. Okay. Because it's, there's heavy like lightning. And sometimes it's the wind is very strong. Yeah, that too, the wind. So kind of like broke your umbrella. Yeah, brace your umbrella. So maybe I like, think it's a lot of it's the lightning though. Okay. Because you can it can be really dangerous to have an umbrella in the middle of the lightning storm because okay. the lightning will want to come to whatever is higher up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So like when I was growing up in. Colorado, we actually had people like die from uh, carrying umbrella. So, what kind of case do you think like American will use an umbrella? 
Um, what if it's not? If it's not like lightning, then it's more common. They, they're not so windy. Yeah, but like so, so people are so used to not wearing umbrella, they just never do. It. Yeah, but but in the Midwest, it's so windy, so yeah. you never get a chance yeah. to use. Uh, so I usually umbrella. just wear coats. Yeah, I, I think that's more often, uh, especially what whenever I visit Seattle. Yeah, they they wear the coats. Yeah, the uh, rain jacket. Rain jacket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Seattle gets a lot more rain too. Do you think Seattle's weather is kind of similar to UK? Uh, I imagine. I've never been to Seattle. Okay. I just know it, it gets a lot more rain. Yeah, there's um, um, I mean, when you when you go to Taiwan this time, yeah. If you uh eventually live in Taipei or or maybe somewhere near Keelong, yeah, it's gonna be the similar weather the as UK. Rain. Yeah. It's like late. It rains like ninety percent of the, the yeah. <laughs> the, the, I'd say the it's a, a different kind of rain mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Like um, in Taiwan, you get like these crazy downpours. Crazy rain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're swimming. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> you, First time you, I saw that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't really like those kind of hat. Yeah. yeah. But whenever I stay inside, it's fine. Yeah. I kind yeah. of enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember the first time I experienced that in Taiwan. I was going to the, the market and then I went too far and then I didn't, it was kind of sunny, like half of it was sunny and then the mm -hmm. rain just like rolled in mm -hmm. and I felt like I had to swim back home. I was just like, it felt like, it looked like I went swimming. <laughs> yeah. In like 10 minutes, yeah. Yeah, like sometimes I, I, I would just say like, oh, I'm so wet, like, like my, even my underpants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it can be pretty crazy. Yeah. So, so when you started in UK, did you like get to travel at all? I didn't really travel that much. I should have traveled more. But... Yeah, I know like many students like who started in Europe, yeah. they, they get to travel because it's so convenient, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that is something that surprised me. Is, or maybe it's like it's, it's like kind of cheaper than you travel domestically in the US. Um, like because you can the take flights. the train. Yeah, I'd say the train is more expensive than I thought it would be. Okay. Um, Maybe it's because I live rural, so like rural UK, it's a little harder to travel. Mm -hmm. The buses are the best, but like it's still kind of expensive. Yeah, yeah I kind of remember uh, one of my friends. She she also started. She was pursuing her degree, masters in in UK somewhere, yeah. uh, and then. I mean, the, when she traveled, and she just mentioned that like, oh, the, the flight ticket is just about like. Maybe a hundred US yeah, dollars. I definitely say the flights are cheaper. Like like cheaper, yeah. right? You can fly to definitely cheaper. I think that's why like it's a train that's expensive. Oh train is expensive. Not, yeah, I don't think the train's really worth it. So most of the time. why why do some people like still stick to know. the train? Maybe they like train very much. Uh, in UK the train is expensive. But if you could leave UK and go to Europe it's not so bad. You mean like cross country train or like within like, the same country? If you're in UK and you and you take a train in UK, it's gonna be expensive. Okay. But if you get across the the channel, English Channel, mm -hmm. into like the different countries there, mm -hmm. then the like France and Germany mm -hmm. and Netherlands, all those trains are a lot more affordable. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not Germany, but <laughs> French it. trains and and um, even Swiss trains are more affordable. So when you, I mean, like when you tr tr visit. Uh, UK or yeah. uh, when you started UK, you, you like does these two experiences like actually bring you to other cities or other like out of I mean out of UK? Uh, it's just some of them. So like I've been in, I went to Manchester a couple times. Manchester. Um, what's it called? Uh, Manchester says it's still in UK, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just northern part. Um, kind of northern part of UK. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then well not. Yet. Northern part of England, not UK, because UK is um, Scotland would be about. So when you get to travel around in UK, do you have like your favorite city or maybe your top three cities? I'd say Birmingham. Or not Birmingham, Birmingham. sorry. Uh, Manchester is my favorite. Manchester. Yeah. Why? It is a nicer city, cleaner. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cleaner. Friendlier people. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's cleaner than Chicago? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't think Chicago is very clean. <laughs> it's okay, but. I mean, yeah. Chicago is, is is okay for me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, com uh, we will need to see how like how how we compare with it, right? Yeah. Like maybe compare with it. You uh, New York is definitely yeah. <laughs> way cleaner. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I I think Milwaukee is also clean. Yeah, it's actually cleaner than I would have expected before I came. How here. about compare with Manchester, like Milwaukee um, and Manchester? I say they're about the same. About the same. Yeah. Okay. In my opinion. Yeah, good to hear that. Like, yeah. <laughs> Milwaukee people really do a good, good job on the yeah. uh, environment. 
It's not like Japan. Like, you not as clean as Japan. Oh, Japan. Yeah. Yeah. When I did you travel to Japan before? Yeah. So I was in Osaka. For, okay. For like three weeks. Okay. Yeah. I I, I, tra- I also traveled to Osaka when I graduated from college. Yeah. Uh. So I, I traveled to Kansai. Okay. Uh. So and and I visited four city and Osaka is definitely one of them. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, as you say, Japan is a very really yeah. clean country. Yeah, especially Kyoto. I, went, went I, I like Kyoto very yeah. much because it's like, like history, some yeah. his, historical building is yeah. definitely good. So, um, I wonder for for your degree, <clears throat> did you get to like write a thesis and, and also have a thesis defense? Do I didn't get to do defense, but I did write the thesis. Okay. Yeah, so UK, they don't. They don't have like a defense thing? There's no, you don't have to do a moral defense. You just write the paper and then get a grade for it. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, uh, your graduation requirement is just when you submit the, the thesis and yeah. when the, your professor give you a grade? Yeah. Based so, on that? But for the final thesis, you have to get like three different grades, I think. And oh. And they give you an average of the three. Well, what is the three? They didn't Sorry. tell me that. Okay. They just told me what my final grade was. So. Okay. Yeah. So they have like... Actually, it's three aspects of grading. Yeah, only for the final one, only for your dissertation. Okay. Or thesis, I can't remember what to call it. I think it's thesis. Thesis. It's like your research, right? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Three aspects. I think it would be like, maybe like the the motivation you have research yeah. and then the, like the resource you got. Yeah. And it may be... Maybe one of them could be like how you how how well you write a. Oh, thesis. Well, what I mean is like you get graded the same, mm-hmm. like on the same criteria, but mm-hmm. they have to go through three different professors. So they mm-hmm. all all three of them grade the same thing. They just do it separately, mm-hmm. and then they just average their grade. I see. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so three different professors give you three different grades, mm-hmm. but it's for the same amount, like for the whole thing. Okay. Um, grades also work different in UK. Oh. Yeah. How, how, how is that? So like in, in America, if you get like below a 90 or like below 80, you consider not that great of, of a grade. Like a, like a C, right? Like, yeah, you, like if you get a C in America, it's considered pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, it, like B is Do, like do they bad. use like A, B, C, D for grades? No, they use like distinction, merit, and oh, I forget the other one. So it's actually yeah. totally different. It's system. totally different. So it's not do, even like 100 points. No, no, so if you get a seventy percent in UK, you did. That's like the top grade. It's like you got an A. Oh, you got seventy percent. You like it's like or, an a. or above. Yeah, you got an a. Okay. yeah. And so it's like almost above. They never give hundreds mm-hmm. in in America. They'll give you a hundred all the time. Like if you, they'll say, "Oh, you did perfect," so you get a hundred. Mm-hmm. In UK, it's like they never give you hundred. Okay. Yeah. So so like even for seventy percent, it's hard to get. Yeah, seventy. If you got seventy percent, it's like you you're like the top of the class. Wow. UK. Does it mean late, late grade, late grade, like severe? I guess, yeah. Right. But like, but like it, it's like different weights. So like, if you got a seventy in America, even if, if some professors in America are really strict, mm. like if they're well known, some professors like take pride, and they okay. say, "Oh, I, I only get only like two A's in my whole class." Okay, you see what I mean? Mm. But in UK, it's different. Like if you get seventy, it's like you you gonna have it's like you have an A. Okay. You have a merit distinction, a merit on your so your diploma will have like the. the Say that you graduated, but then it also have classifications. So like, you got you passed, you got your degree, but you got merit means you got a seventy percent average out of all your classes. Do they also have like like a G- GPA thing? Nah, you don't. You just have percentages, and then they instead of having GPA, they just give you like classifications, okay. like merit distinction. That's interesting because, I, I mean personally, I don't, I I don't have any like friends from from uh, UK mm. uh, so I really wonder like I mean if there's any like uh, local people from UK yeah. um, like is listening to these podcasts please let us know that uh, um, when you apply for I mean if you're in, in a situation like you're currently in, in the US yeah. and then how did you like transfer your grades into GPA uh, or that would be a really yeah. interesting story. Yeah, because I know the opposite. They're taking GPA into like the UK system, but mm. I have no idea how they do it. Yeah. Either way. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. So, um, I wonder, like, through all your study, do you, do you think, um, like, even there's a pandemic? Do you think it kind of affect your goals? Like, affect your your like originally goal, or you, you think it's like you 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 still uh, like make. I mean, make the final goals as you expect 
expectation? Um, well, I mean, obviously, you can't get into other countries right now, so mm -hmm. that does affect it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you can always make an adjustment if you really care about your vision. You can you can change to okay. make it happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So okay, so, sounds like it's still like. I mean, for for you, the experience of starting a bro scale good. Yeah. Uh, even there's a kind of a pandemic effect yeah. uh, affecting the, the the final part of your yeah. The, I mean your your degree. So um, I wonder, in these the 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 end of the podcast, do you have any suggestion for for just for yourself when you for 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 the you mm. before you. Starting in UK, do you have any suggestion for him? Uh, just travel more. <laughs> oh, travel more. Yeah, oh, I, I should have got out and I went to different cities and stuff more often. Yeah, I believe and, it's kind of broadened out your aspect of. Yeah, that. I think I studied a little too hard on that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, um, I mean, that's good. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and and I believe you eventually you will have the chance to travel around Europe in the, I mean, the future when when the pandemic's over. Yeah. So, but but yeah, definitely. Uh, I I heard a lot of. At least my friends later they're studying in uh, Europe. They, yeah. they they get to kind of like travel to different yeah. city when whenever they have time. Mm. I don't even know if they are like a visitors or <laughs> studying there yeah. because they travel so much. Yeah. But oh, but uh, I I believe they 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 spend the time well and then and then yeah. figure out some of the the time they can use <laughs> to yeah. travel around. Yeah. And then yeah, so. Definitely, uh, travel around would be a good plan. So, and do you have any like, let let's for yourself. Do you have any advice for like students who who want to go to the the UK or, I think we talk mainly yeah. talk about UK later. Student from from the U from the US. Do you um, have any suggestion for that? I'd say um, if you want to stay in the UK, you should have a clear vision in mind because it's not like uh, in America where you can be a little bit more flexible. Once you choose a path in, in the UK, they kind of like force you down that path. So you should, before you do it, you should know what you want to do. You mean UK? Yeah, in UK. Yeah. So literally. It's not like in America where you can be a little more flexible. If you study yeah. the wrong thing, you can change later. Mm -hmm. Like in, in the US, if you study like philosophy and you decide you don't want to do philosophy anymore, you could go to law school. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In the, in the you mean the class part, right? right? The, the class part. Yeah, so like, if you finish your degree and then you want to change later in the UK, it's not really easy. They'll make you mostly you have to go through bachelor all over again if you want to change. Okay. So Versus it's, US, it's more flexible. Yeah, so you gotta think deeply. Yeah. Before you make the decision yeah. or your, I mean, your choice. Yeah. Your choice or of the 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 program or the yeah. department you're gonna study. Yeah, I yeah I think that is definitely something very important that. Um, I think that everyone need to need to uh, think about that um, because I feel like it's gonna take you a lot of time, yeah, like to start over or or you, you probably oh I don't have the interest, uh, I don't have the um, passion for yeah. that. Probably go home. And <laughs> yeah, I guess the other thing is be aware of like um, the different ideology in UK mm -hmm. from US, like politically speaking. Mm -hmm. um, we had different values, and you had to be aware of them. Um, Do you think the uh, the environment for, especially for international students, um, for probably I would take the the U.S. students, student for example, mm -hmm. if they choose to go to U.K., do you think it's pra practical? Uh, Late, uh, to to work later after graduation. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy to get. I didn't really pursue that option, but it was definitely there. It's, like the the UK universities have um, opportunities for internships and and uh, gateways to work in different places, especially in London. It's uh, there's a lot of opportunities in London for for like um, different kinds of work. How do they science and stuff? Gotcha. How do they deal with the uh, the visa thing? Like, yeah, like so do they like get a degree and then got, a, got they they will get, have the legal um, I mean legal probably like like a car or like like a visa to stay there. Yeah, for you, you have to you have to transfer your visa into a working visa, but there's some flexibility. Mm -hmm. So you just have to work with the embassy and get the other visa. Is it is it mandatory uh, to like to earn a degree before working with? Yeah, okay. uh, you or you can work twenty hours part time. While you study, okay. So if you wanna um, like end up working in the UK, it's yeah. definitely uh, a very good idea to pursue a degree beforehand. Yeah, because yeah, then you'll have connections from the university and stuff. It's it's a lot easier. Okay. 
Especially for a visa thing, right? Yeah. Because it's easier to tra- I think it's it's easier to transfer your visa if you're already, if you're in if you're already in the UK with a student visa. It's easier to transfer it to a work visa, and it's easier to get the work permit and everything. Do you know if is there like a the time limit? Uh, there is a visa? time limit. I don't remember what it is. So okay. Yeah, I think it's six months after you graduate, mm-hmm. and I think you can apply for an extension too. Okay. Like a one year, I think. Okay, and then yeah. do you like uh, because what I from what I know about the e- the U.S. part yeah. for, for international uh, immigrants, we need to like for work, working visa. You it's not like a permanent solution. Yeah. You, you gonna eventually you need to get a green card for yeah. some, some at some point. Something like that. In UK. So is it yeah. actually similar concept yeah. in UK? Yeah. Okay. But eventually, you can get on with your permanent residency mm-hmm. status. Yeah. Do you think that's easy? Um, I think you have to work in UK for a while. Mm-hmm. I'd say it's probably comparable to US. Okay. In difficulty. So it yeah. depends on the the time you work there. Yeah. Like if you work longer, you can get a yeah. residency. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Okay, that sounds not bad. Yeah. I mean, for, for a US US part, you need to show your outstanding outstanding behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's a little harder in US. And yeah, so. So yeah, I think that's good. Um, well, yes, I never actually looked into it that hard. Mm. So uh, there might be other things I don't know about for residency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, I think. Uh, well, I think there's one other thing I should mention is that okay. I did encounter some a lot of, um, not a lot of, but like a medium amount of um, uh, anti-American sentiment in the UK. Oh really? It's something you should probably be aware of. Um, there's a growing like distrust of Americans and like anti-American philosophy. Because I think um, like the rise of Trump kind of made it um, like a lot of UK people don't like Trump. They're very oh, liberal. because when you when you started there, it's actually during the presidency of yeah. Trump, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So there was some anti-American sentiment. Yeah, that was a little mm-hmm. jarring. Like if I had a conversation with people about different issues, even on campus, we would have like a student union, and they would they would have like open discussion about how things should change when we talk about this and have like a it's supposed to be just like a discussion about what policy should be and i I voice my concern and i have like other people who didn't like what i said and they'll say oh just because you're a stupid american you don't know what you're talking about or like oh "Oh, you're just ignorant because you're american Mm -hmm. so i I, thought i heard this a few times where people just have this like idea of what American is and it's being like stupid or like okay like racist or something mm-hmm. and so it's just like they, and they just project it on you like I so. see yeah yeah I hope the situation is gonna change soon because uh, I feel like Biden is having a good relationship yeah I mean yeah. at least start a good relationship with UK right now I saw the news a couple of days ago and, and he visit uh, UK right uh, yeah. and then also the I think the what is that the, the loyal family or right, the, yeah. the family and, and then yeah, I think it's a good start. So, mm, yeah, we hope the situation will be will be changed in the yeah. very near future. Like, if you guys start in UK uh, as a, um, I mean, I mean, if you are American and then you start in UK, yeah. it's hope that things will Better. never uh, land on you. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd say it's not that common though. Not it common. sometimes happens, but yeah, because we know that like. We all have those kind of people yeah. in the country or yeah. in a <laughs> in a city. Yeah, everywhere. Every yeah, just whenever you you so whenever you see those kind of people, just ignore them. Yeah. <laughs> do not do not pick the fight. <laughs> I yeah. mean, that's not um, it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Because you, just, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, ho- ho- hopefully, uh, all all the situations gonna change very soon. Yeah. Uh, I know the. I mean, UK they started the vaccine for, uh, for the for the COVID for a while. I mean, yeah. probably as as much as as the US yeah. spent on that. So, um, hopefully the the whole study abroad things could be, I would say, reactive yeah. again. Yeah. And then yeah, because starting abroad is always interesting thing to do to do. Um, so yeah. I believe you. You guys will have the chance to visit or, yeah. or to starting. As, as, I mean, like overseas very soon. Yeah. So yeah. So let's today's podcast. We're really uh, happy to have David here. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so um, maybe when you when you start your like 
I mean, that that next page of your career, we can talk about that next time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's today's topic.